New Book One, From Then to Now, Part 23. I like being near the ocean like you do, Goldie, but I don't want to live on a farm all my life like my parents. I want to explore life for myself, said Rosa as she ate. I'm that way also, Rosa. It's hard for me to stay in one place a long time, but I will always be near the ocean, because I know this is where I am to be, I said. What is your book about? she asked. It's about my life and what I have experienced and come to realise with my family and with my friend Rebazar, what he has taught me and the places he has taken me, I replied. I can respect what you are doing, Goldie. My parents have told me about their experiences. I know that I have had some things occur within myself, but I don't feel what they share with me relates to my life at this time, she said as she was looking at the ocean. I can understand, Rosa. What I have come to know takes a lot of endurance to continue on. In a way, I would not suggest that what I am doing in my life would be the right way for anyone. For me, all I can do is move forward into the next position of understanding for myself. I already basically know what I am up against as I present what I know to others. I am not here to convince anyone of anything. I am simply here to share what I know with others. My writing will be another option for people. I also know that there will be very few who will take the time to learn and explore what else is possible? As I write about the experiences I have had, I continually learn so much from everything I am going through. For me, it's really about the adventure and the lifestyle I know is real, I said. You have a brave soul, Goldie. I can see that what you are attempting will take a lot of courage, because most people are so indoctrinated into some form of belief that really only equals words in a book and possibly nothing more. I don't really know. This is where my parents and I do agree, because I can see what the church is doing and what they have done in the past. I'm not interested in what most people look to as their god because there seems to be so much fear 
guilt and intimidation involved with what the authorities are telling people the religious people that i have met who are really into their belief seem so afraid of anything else in their life even what they believe in they label everything when i look at nature and see horses running free and the birds flying high in the sky i have this wonderful feeling that life is telling me something that is right in front of me i have read so many books about other cultures and how they see and believe life to be for them if i had been born somewhere else in the world i would have the understanding of that place and those beliefs i know within myself that there is something that is beyond what i can understand but i don't think i am ready to find out about it just yet how do you see life to be for you goldie she asked it's all really rather simple to understand and accept once you learn to get past your own resistance what you just said about nature and what you are seeing is very real the earth and everything that is taking place here is part of the big picture but only a piece of it the basic reality of what we are all going through is that there are so many worlds levels and areas to discover than what we have come to know on the earth all of us will be here a short time and then move into another area that already exists but while we are here we can learn to explore the other worlds that are within ourselves right now it is all decided by the choices we make you have decided not to explore so for you your life will be according to what you decide it will be those people that look to a belief system have the right to do so and the outcome of what they have chosen will be whatever it is all of us are in the same life and live with the same true reality but from our limited personal mind we are deciding about something the mind cannot fathom and so this is where we can learn to find out with real experience with our real awareness i said i could see that rosa was thinking hard on what i was saying but it was not my intent to convince her because she had the right to decide her direction and what she wanted for herself 
I like how you explain yourself, Goldie. It seems so free and easy. I can tell that you do not cater to a belief, but a lifestyle instead, and I really like that, she said. That's very good, Rosa. That is the true meaning of what I like to present. I am not going to share what I know to establish anything. I am only sharing it to let others know that the opportunity exists, and that's all. Life in the true sense is a real freedom beyond what our mind and senses can know. It is a beingness that is beyond description. It is just like the sun in the sky, the sea that flows, and the sound of the wind that is free to move and be. The biggest part of life is the same. I will share what I know from what I will write, but what I will be writing will not be the true reality, as it can only be a reference to it. Sharing with others is part of the great adventure of living and learning about yourself, and the continual expansion of the real you. It takes a lot to learn what is real, and then to present it, but it is what makes my life what I want it to be, I said. Well, Goldie, what you're telling me sounds wonderful. Like a child's dream for real happiness. I would like to try for the same dream some day. But for now, I have to find out about other things that I want to have in my life, such as my career, she said. I nodded with her, and didn't say any more. I just sat there until she wanted to go. We soon mounted up, and were on our way. As I was riding off, the cat finally caught up after finishing his fish and jumped on. The big city, as Rosa called it, was actually a good-sized town that was near the ocean but most of it was a few kilometres inland. We rode along the coast at a casual pace until late afternoon when we came to the big town and then headed inland to the centre of it. On the outskirts, there were a few houses here and there. Most of these people had farms of some size. There were a lot of crops being grown all over the place. It was a beautiful area where the people here had put a lot of work into. I was a little nervous about this new part of my life, 
and what would soon be taking place. It was another step into the unknown for me, and having to deal with the limited part of myself, even though there was always reluctance within myself, I was willing to do what most people won't. Reba's Artars had taught me years ago about the little personal self, and how you have to force it to get what you want, or it will rule your life and drag you into situations that you may not want. I could easily see what he was saying, because every time I came back from the other worlds to the earth, I was not as happy as I was while I was on the inner. The earth is a hard place, and to endure it with the awareness of what else is so much better is very difficult at times. I knew how most humans are. They like the positions they have set up according to what they have been taught here, and what they want that equals their survival on Earth. We soon reached our destination where Rosa was living. She lived in a nice room above the general store. It was a Sunday afternoon, which I just found out myself from Rosa telling me, because I don't really keep track of what day it is. She said the store is only open until noon on Sundays, and then the owners go to their church gathering in the afternoons. We went up to her room after we tied the horses up around back. The cat followed us to her living area. It was a very nice place. She had been rather creative with so many things that made it pleasant and comfortable. She had her living space and her bed in the same room. We sat on the little couch she had and rested ourselves for a while. I was finally starting to see my new life unfolding right in front of me. I had to laugh to myself as Rosa looked over at me and wondering what I was seeing. Do you want something to eat, Goldie? she asked. Sure, I'll eat anything, so don't go to too much bother, I said. There's some homemade bread and honey down in the store, and I can get you a can of beans. How would that be? she asked. That would be great, I said. She went downstairs while I rested my eyes. I slipped out of myself for a moment and saw Rebazar's face. 
You're doing a good, youngster. Relax and enjoy it, he said. Then I found myself back in the body as Rosa was walking up the stairs. Here you are, she said as she walked into the room. I bought something for the cat too, as she handed it to him. This looks real good, Rosa. I'll have to take you out to a nice dinner one night somewhere in town, I said, as she handed me a plate of some bread and beans. We'll have plenty of time for that, Goldie. Tomorrow we'll go and see the people who take care of the school and see if we can get you in, she said as she pleasantly smiled. That would be good, I said as I was enjoying the meal. Goldie, can I ask about your personal life? asked Rosa. What do you mean? I said. Do you have any lady friends that you are seeing? she asked. You mean like a girlfriend? Someone that I would be going with or dating? I said as I was starting to laugh. What's so funny? Did I say something funny? she asked. Well, maybe, because I never really thought of myself as having a personal life, just a life that keeps moving into the next adventure that will be taking place. The subject is a bit humorous to me, because I have always been an Indian, and an Indian scout, who has little, if any, time to consider women of any sorts, I said, giggling a little. You are funny, Goldie. You are such a handsome man. When the single women in this town see you, they will be coming around in great numbers, she said while she was smiling at me. I don't really know what you mean, because the life I have lived here so far has not involved any real relationship like my parents have. I have been so involved in what I do that I never really thought about a relationship with a woman. Besides, where would I keep her? There is only so much room on my horse, and the cat uses the little bit I have. I doubt if there are any women that would accept what I do, and where I'm going, I said, still thinking it was rather humorous to consider myself with someone while I was on earth. Well, Goldie, we'll see what happens as time goes on. You mark my words. There will be some persuasive young ladies that will try to make you see things their way, she said as she was also giggling a bit. We both had a good laugh about what she brought up. She made me think about shiz, and how wonderful she is. 
At this point in my life, I couldn't see myself with a real relationship here. I liked the inner worlds so much that what I was experiencing here was such a pale comparison to all the beautiful wonders that lie beyond this life. We sat up for a while longer and talked, and then we went to sleep. We were both tired from the long ride, and all that had taken place during the day. I immediately went to the inner, and found myself on the top of the mountain again. Shis was already there, waiting for me. Thank you.